Hello, welcome to Juniper Level Botanic Garden, the home of Plant Delights uh, Nursery. Today we're going to talk about some plants that date from the um, dinosaur times. So I, I don't know if you go back as far as that. Uh, I do. Um, um, and we're, the ones we're going to look at are actually New World species. They're native to Mexico and a few of them extend into like Honduras and Ecuador but most of the species are native to Mexico. And the thing that I thought was notable is that this, these winters when we go down to the mid-teens, the Chinese ones lose all their foliage. Now the plants are fine and we'll take a peek at one. They're incredible amount of perfect new foliage so they're just fine but um, we're gonna look at two species of Ceratozamia. There are, there are about 27 species in that family, it, well, in that genus, and all New World, as I said. This is Ceratozami coesterianum. Um, I'm sure that's named after a person. Um, they're smaller species that are, have an underground trunk, so they don't get really tall like some of the cycas and the, um, some of the uh, African uh, cycads. This was planted in 2014, so it's about 11 years old. I suspect it was started as a small plant, and we discovered just now it's attempting to reproduce. Now, I don't really think we call that the flowers. Um, zamias, the cycads, are very primitive plants. They were not they are not related to the true palms. They are not flowering plants. See, that structure is much more like a conifer, a pine tree or spruce or other conifers. Um, and um, the zamia, ceratozamias are actually um, dioecious, meaning two homes. So the uh, plants are either male or female. I think that's a, a female cone, um, and I know enough about the birds and bees. If you want pollination to happen, it's good to have um, plants adjacent to each other or fairly close to each other. Now, one problem with ceratozame, well, with the cycads in general, is um, um, you know they have very specific pollinators and they might not be present outside their home range. Though I, I imagine a human could uh, transfer pollen onto the female cone. But um, the ceratozamias are smaller growing cycads. In 11 years, this is as big as it has gotten. This, I think, really beautiful sort of bronzy color to the new foliage. Um, was darker when it, the, they first leafed out two months ago, but it still has a fair amount of that pigment. And eventually the fronds will um, green up and because um, they don't, the foliage does not get damaged by um, uh, winter cold or at least mid-teens, mid it's a beautiful presence year round. Looks like a large fern. The other uh, species of ceratozamia we're going to see is very different, and it's very different from most other um, cycads, but a very, very beautiful, beautiful thing. This is one of the cycas, the, uh, another group of distantly related cycads from Asia. And the point I wanted to make to you is all of this foliage you see here was produced this spring because all of last year's foliage was burnt off by 14 degrees. So even though the plant probably, does, probably wasn't set back at all by losing its foliage, it wasn't evergreen like the uh, ceratozamias were. And this seems to be blooming again. It bloomed last year. This is the beginning of the female cone or whatever you might call them on a cycad. There's even, there's parts of the last year's. After blooming, it opened up and uh, 
made these fruit that, uh, or no, made these seeds that um, they have no uh, actual seed inside of this shell. I don't know if I could cut one open without cutting my fingers off. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I cut, cut one open and you see it's hollow inside. Now in some parts of the world, um, the, the nuts of uh, cycads are eaten, maybe only when you have nothing else to eat. If you eat enough of them, you go colorblind. I know it sounds like uh, some tall tale I'm making up, but I look it up and you can see it's true. All right, well, let's go on and find uh, uh, another ceratozamia. This is the other ceratozamia I wanted to show you. It's a very different one. This is ceratozamia hildae named for, I'm sure, someone named Hilda. The A-E ending indicates it was named for a woman. Um, and this one is sometimes called the, ba not baboon, bamboo zamia, or bamboo cycad, because the leaves do, or the fronds look a bit like some bamboos, also some palms. Um, both species, and I, I believe it's common in the genus Ceratozamia, that they prefer shade. They will even tolerate heavy shade. They will survive in full sun, but then the foliage ends up looking sort of bleached out. Um, this again went through 14 degrees without any foliage burn. Uh, the plants never seem to be overly vigorous. I want them to have a lot more fronds, but it remains a real beauty in the garden. And we have a second plant that has slightly different uh, foliage. Um, both um, species, well, I think most members of that genus, the uh, ceratozamia, are extremely rare in the wild, um, partly due to uh, habitat destruction. I also worry that there's probably a lot of plant collectors digging them from the wild. They are occasionally available from nurseries. We were able to buy seed of both of them, but same, uh, cycads are slow from seed, so it'd be a number of years provided they even germinate. But, um, you know, in gardens could provide a refuge for these plants that are threatened in the wild. Um, but it only really makes sense if you grow multiple plants so you actually have seed production and then uh, you could produce even more plants. You know, I've mentioned um, Ceratozami coesteriana is probably named for somebody with the family name of Coester and Hilde named for a woman named Hilda. Well, let's look at the uh, generic name, Ceratozamia. Well, we understand why they are zamia because that's what these cycads are called and kerato is horns um, the same root as keratin and keratin is what makes up your fingernails your hair and a rhinoceros horn so a lot of plants have keras k-e-r-a -K or c-e-r-a in the name and many of the um, ceratozamias are very thorny a Ceratozamia mexicana has thorns not just on the leaf stalk but also on the surface of the leaf blade. This one and the Questeriana, well this one I don't think has any thorns and Questeriana, if it has any, I haven't noticed them. Well let's go look at the other plant. Yeah, th this is our second plant of Ceratozamia hildae and the divisions of the frond, if we call it, are much longer and the number of divisions varies a whole lot on the stem. Here everything's going on at one spot and you know, others there's three. I'd love to see a wild population where there's many individuals and maybe a tremendous, a, a tremendously more variation. Anyhow, we're going to stop 
in the step in the uh, spaceship and head over to see a third Ceratozamia. This is a third species of Ceratozamia we have in the gardens here at Juniper Level Botanic Garden. This is Ceratozamia microstroboli. Micro, you certainly realize, means small. And stroboli, a strobolus is a cone. So a pine cone is a strobolus, and the cone on a cycad is also referred to as a strobolus by botanists. And I will make it a little bit more uh, obvious. It looks very much like the uh, one on Coesterianum. And again, I think this is a female cone, so wish we had a male cone that was producing pollen. Of course, you, they also need to be uh, receptive at, at the same time, or the female cone needs to be receptive at the time that the male cone is uh, producing pollen. So if you're um, one of the people that's on a waiting list for the recreation of dinosaurs, you can get a head start in creating suitable habitat by them by growing some uh, cycads. It'll help to make your new pet brontosaurus feel at home. Thank you for your time today, and I hope to see you again in the garden.